Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. So one of the things that I really value in the home lab is the ability to take notes. And for the past couple of years, I've been using Joplin notes pretty extensively just for my personal notes. And it works pretty well and also family members can have their own accounts with their own notebooks and independent sets of notes. In addition to that, I've also used flat notes before, but recently I've looked at this application that seems to be brand new that is called Hoarder. And Hoarder, it says here, is an independent non-commercial project. It's not affiliated with or endorsed by or connected to something called Hoarder app, missing the E, or its owners. And basically what it is, it is an application that allows you to take bookmarks from the web or graphics that you have on your machine or also just plain textual notes and drop them into an interface that becomes searchable. I did another tutorial not too long ago about Image and Image is a program that allows you to store videos and pictures or images, hence the word image, I believe. And this reminds me a little bit of image, except it's really designed to keep personal notes rather than graphics. Although you can upload graphical pictures to it, but I think it's more made to capture things like screenshots, web pages, and personal textual notes as well. And looking down through this, it is a pretty easy program to install. The author said, why did I build it? He said, I browse Reddit, Twitter, and Hacker News a lot from my phone. And I frequently find interesting stuff such as articles, tools, and etc. that I'd like to bookmark and read later when I'm in front of a laptop. Typical read it later apps is a typical use case for this. And he said, initially I was using Pocket for that. Then I got into self-hosting and I wanted to self-host this particular use case. So this is an interesting application and it looks like it's fairly brand new, as I said. In fact, um, the last release of it was February the 2nd. And for the most part, it looks like most of the elements from it are just a couple of months old. The way the application is built, you can certainly self-host it inside your network or you can make it publicly available through Nginx Proxy Manager. And then when you make it available through Nginx Proxy Manager, you can either enable or disable the signup capability. And in my case, I've disabled it because I prefer to create accounts as required myself. So here we have the sign-in option and I have my credentials stored in Bitwarden. And if I can find them here by typing in hoarder, I'll go ahead and click the fill button and go ahead and log in. So I've basically dragged and dropped a few links. I have here some notes that I put in for this particular presentation. If I click on it, it will go ahead and, uh, show me that um, presentation there that I put just a couple of notes in for. And if I go back over here, I can click on one of these and it will take me to the appropriate web page that is linked to it as well. So here, if I click on Hubitat as an example, it will go over to the Hubitat community. Here, if I click on Incus, it will go over to the Incus release notes. And here, if I click on the Hoarder app, it will go to the GitHub page for Hoarder that we were just looking at. In addition to that, you can build up tags and you can search for individual items by text. And it's able to OCR those just like you can get in Paperless NGX. And it's able to find information that you have previously stored. So let's go take a look at how we install and configure Hoarder. Hoarder is a Docker application and we're going to nest it inside of an Incus container and we're using an Incus launch images 2404 
giving it the name hoarder and giving it the default profile as well as the bridge profile which I describe in my tutorial entitled Incas Container Step-by-Step. -step. Then I set boot.autostart equals to true which means that when the Incas server boots this container starts as well. And finally I set security.nesting equals to true which means that we're able to nest a Docker application inside of an Incas container. First thing we want to do is go ahead and do an Incas shell hoarder to move inside of the Incas container. And the first thing you want to do with the new container is to perform an app update. And the purpose of that is to make sure that all of our repositories are completely up to date. After the repositories are up to date, Next thing that we want to do is go ahead and install some dependencies. I'm installing curl, nano, net-tools, and open ssh-server. Since Hoarder is a Docker application, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to go ahead and install Docker from the script at the Docker website. Now that Docker's installed, I'm going to go ahead and put myself in the sudo group so I can perform maintenance later on. Although I've not yet added the Scott user account, which I intended to do earlier. So let's go ahead and do an add user on Scott. And then we'll go ahead and provide Scott a password, verify that password. And now that we have a user account, let's go ahead and put Scott into the sudo group. At the same time, let's go ahead and put Scott in the Docker group so we don't have to use sudo commands to execute Docker commands. Let's go ahead and su over to the Scott account. And once we get there, we'll go ahead and do a make dir on hoarder, and then we'll cd inside of the hoarder folder that we just created. Let's do a wget on the docker compose file for the hoarder application. Let's now do a nano on the .env environment variable file and we'll paste in a couple of values here to begin with. The very first thing that we want to do is we'll leave the hoarder version um, at release and we have to come up with a next auth secret and also a melee master key. And then if you're hosting this on a domain, you'll want to go ahead and change that to https colon slash slash your subdomain name. If not, you can go ahead and leave it as it is here. I've set up the data directory to be dot slash data, but you can certainly set that up to be whatever you want and disable signups you can set it to true or to false. By default, it is false. So I'm going to do a control O and enter to write the file out and a control X to exit the nano editor for now. Now you want to head up to your web browser and visit platform.openai.com and get an API key. I'm going to go ahead and type in my test key, which is what's up here. And I'll go ahead and just call my project test uh, or default project, I guess is what they've got here. I'll just go ahead and leave that alone and I'll say generate API key. And so I'll copy that API key. I'll go ahead and head back down to my terminal and edit the .env file once again, move down to the bottom of it and paste my key in. The only difference here is I have open AI under bar API under bar key equals to that key that I just got. And you're going to want to keep that key secret. I'm going to destroy that key after this video. And the next thing I did up here is an open SSL and I generated another random key this time, not an API key. And I went ahead and went back into the .env file, and that one is set up as next auth under bar secret, and there's the value of that key that I've inserted in there. Let's go ahead and generate another key with the open SSL command again, and let's go ahead and copy that key, 
and go back in and edit the file. And up here we have something called next auth secret and I'll go ahead and do a shift control V to paste that key in there. And then also there's this Millie master key down here at the end. So I'll go ahead and generate another key with open SSL and I'll make a copy of it and I'll go back into the editor once again and go back up here and do another shift control V and then I'll do a control O and enter to write the file out and a control X to exit the nano editor. Now that we have all the values in the env environment variable file, we can go ahead and do a docker space compose space up dash d and it will go ahead and download all of the container parts and go ahead and start it. You'll notice there's three containers here. The web container, which is running at port 3000, the Chrome container, and the Mealy search container. Once the Docker Compose file completes, you should be able to do a Docker PS. And what you're looking for is that the container is up and running and that it is healthy. The next thing we want to do is an if config to find out the address of device ETH0. And here you can see it's 172.16.1.200 in my case. Now I head up to my web browser and enter the address that we just found. In my case, that's 172.16.1.200. And I put a colon 3000 because this application uses port 3000. I hit enter and it comes up. First thing I want to do is click on the sign up option and I'll go ahead and type in my name. I'll go ahead and type in my email and then I'll go ahead and type in a password and I'll click sign up finally. And it wants me to confirm my password, which I didn't notice there. So we'll go ahead and type my password again. And now I can click sign up. And it goes ahead and logs in. Now that I'm logged in, it will say here on your new item, you have a choice of pasting a link, pasting an image, writing a note, or you can drag and drop an image in this location. So as an example here, I'll go ahead and grab an Incus uh, snapshots picture that I have here, which is just from one of my previous videos. And this is just a JPEG file that I put in here. And then it tries to guess what the tags are just to give it some searchable options. You can go ahead and modify those any way that you want. If I go up here to the upper right hand corner and click on the S for Scott, it gives me a choice of user settings and admin settings. Under user settings, you can of course change your password and you can change or modify your name or email as well and your interface language. If we go under the admin settings, we have the ability to look at the server stats look at the version number of the program that's running, or we can go add new users, and that way we can have other users in here. And there's other options as well, and I really haven't investigated all of them, but I just wanted to let everybody know how this application works in general. Hoarder appears to be a great note-taking application, and I look forward to seeing what the author plans on doing with it in the future. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit your notification bell and we'll see you next time.